This is a mission, not a small time thing. But the message for Christ that, 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 that I, I think I've, I've heard Bishop say, and, and what I want to, to say to you today involves three things. First, the message of Christ should invite us. Invite us to come to Christ, first and foremost. You need it, and the people outside this church need that. Need it. They need an invitation to come and understand who Christ is. The second thing is the message of Christ should give us hope. Because we don't all make the same choices. And, and we were young and stupid at one point in our lives. Amen? Amen? So we should have hope that even in the midst of who we are, the, 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 the bad mistakes that we make, that we can change. That God isn't done with any of us. For all of us have fallen short of God's glory. And if there's hope for me, then we should show a little love to our neighbor and let them know that there's hope for them too. We should let our children know that there's hope for them when they make mistakes. And we have to realize that our children will fail from time to time. They're not perfect. Why? Because they have us as an example. And I know sometimes you cringe, you'd be like, mm, he acting just like me. And the ladies would be saying, mm, you acting just like your daddy. No. And the third thing is, it should transform us. God's word should transform us. A, a, a change should be going on in our lives. Like I said, I don't want to be long this morning. Uh, but this is what serving Christ offers us, those, those three things. And again, the hard part is figuring out how we're going to apply that message to our life. How will we honor God in the individual choices that we make? And how will we honor God as we deal with our family and friends? Now, I can't tell you what that means for you. I can't tell you what it means. Because I think a relationship with Christ is a very personal thing. And unless you have that personal relationship with Christ, I can stand up here and say whatever, tell you A, B, C, D, Z. These are the steps to a holy and blessed life, but unless you figure it out for yourself, it's not going to matter. What I say, what Bishop says, what Pastor Nat says, now, you know, they can give you some advice, but unless you take it to heart and, and figure out how it applies to, to Glenn or Shay or Sharon, you know, it's not going to make a difference. You know, I want to take the time because I know some people in here, you know, are hurting somewhat. You know, we have had people that have made some, some bad choices. All of us have some hurt in our lives. Some choices that we made that we regret. Some choices that have cost us a lot in our relationships. Some of, some of us in our own families with our children. You know, sometimes we can be so resentful of some of the things that go on with ourselves that we pass that on to our children. You know, we struggle. We fight. We war with ourselves because of who we are. We're looking to, to fit in. We're looking to be popular. We're looking to do, outdo the person that's next to us. That's where the struggle comes. Sometimes those struggles cause conflicts in our lives. And we need God to help us reconcile. Because sometimes some of the same mistakes we make as adults are passed on to our children. And as parents, sometimes we want to get upset and want to say, hey, I'm done with you. I'm washing my hands of you. I don't need you in my life. I don't need to be reminded of the mistakes that I made as a parent. We're going to fix this. We don't want anybody to see our problems. We don't want anybody to know that we are human. Because we have to put on a front, we have to put on a show so that everyone else will think that we're perfect. When in actuality, we need God too. In our lives, we struggle, we fight, we war with ourselves, with our family and our, sp and our spouses because 
sometimes, again, we want to fit into a certain mold. We have an idea of what success is. The world tells us what it means to be successful. The world defines us. And because we are so caught up with the love of the world, we forget the love that's right in front of us. We forget the things that are important to us. It causes conflicts in our home. It causes conflict in our marriage. It separates us and breaks us apart. But if we could just love our family members as we love our neighbors, we'd be okay. If we had realistic expectations of our spouses and of our children, if we learned to look at the, the giftings of God versus what we think uh, we should look like, whether it's the Cosby family or some TV family or Alice in Wonderland, whatever you want to call it or whatever label you want to put it. But if, if, if we start to look through the eyes of Christ at one another, maybe we can be a little bit more forgiving. Maybe our marriages would be a little bit stronger. Maybe our children would, would, would soar and fly instead of us condemning them and telling them how they don't measure up. We struggle, we fight, we war with ourselves because we're not loving ourselves. We are resenting the lives that God gave us. We resent our choices and we forget that even in the midst of our mess, God is gracious. Sometimes we think we serve a Burger King God. But in truth, we serve a God who gives us grace, compassion, and mercy when we fail. And sometimes we don't understand what God is saying to us. Sometimes we hate God and say, God, why did you put me in this situation? God, why did you let this happen? God, why didn't you stop this? If you loved me, God, you would have stopped this from happening. But God is saying, you know, I let you choose. The world that you live in isn't perfect. Bad things happen. But when those things happen, I'm there for you. In the end, the love of God is what really matters. Our mission. The mission is to honor God with the lives we live and to share that love, that message of invitation of hope and of transformation with the world. In the youth ministry we say it this way, it is our mission as CCC Generation Youth Ministries to partner with parents and the community to reach out to young people and adopt them as their very own. We will create an environment and opportunities, opportunities that will disciple students in the Word of God, involve them in serving His kingdom, and that will open their hearts and minds to the love of Christ. That's what we say here with the youth ministry. But my final question for you today is, how will you fulfill your mission?